that song. Good morning. I heard that Divine Beast Va, Med Va Meadow has been appeased. It just sends my heart soaring. I didn't even realize I had start started singing this old song. Did you hear me singing it? Teach it to me. Huh? Well, that's embarrassing. Uh, <clears throat> the, the pride of the Rito, pillar in the sky, its heart lights up when the sun is high. Uh, there's more to the song, but I forget the rest of the words. You should ask my sister, Laisa, if you want to know the rest. The Ancient Rito Song. And I believe that Laisa is a little bit further down. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There she is. Last time, we amassed all five sisters, assembled Tron, uh, and Voltroned it up. <gasps> That's so cute! And now they're here singing. The Rito Village, or the, uh, the, um, uh, Badoo. The Dragon Roost Island theme song. I'm so happy. That makes me so happy. And this episode, we are starting on trying to locate the shrine that we found here a number of episodes ago before we defeated Va Meadow and before I was told that we had to appease Va Meadow in order to start those quests. So there are a couple of quests lying around in Rito Village that I am going to get out of the way before we head into the final region of the game. Yeah. Hello. So, Badilly told you I would sing you the last half of the Ancient Rito song. Her memory really is the worst. I can help you, but there's a catch. <laughs> Recite the first half from memory, and I will teach you the second half. I'll give it a shot. Go ahead. Oh, Kubutu. Uh, the wings of the Rito. Wrong. Come back once you actually recite the first half. Well... Considering I kind of skipped past it the first time. The pride of the Rito, pillar in the sky, its heart lights up when the sun is high. Okay, I can do it now. Yes, I, I'll give it a shot. The pride of the Rito, correct. And after that, pillar in the sky. Ah, right again. And then, its heart lights up when the sun is high. Ah, you got every word right. Well, a promise is a promise. I'll teach you the last half of the song. The heart shines upon a path not whole, but a warm, warming flame can stir its soul. That's the second half of the ancient Rito song. Profound, isn't it? And so now, the pride of the Rito pillar in the sky, its heart lights up when the sun is high. The heart shines upon a path not whole, but a warming flame can stir its soul. What's the meaning hidden in these lyrics? Well, to find out, I think we should go to the shrine, which was over there. I actually remembered. Over there, and at noon, at noon o'clock, which is just about to hit, actually, we should be able to complete this. We need a warming flame, so I'm going to cut down some trees, I guess. And then we'll get, get a campfire, place it on top of the shrine when it hits noon. I think that makes sense. Otherwise, I'll, I'll check it one more time. The pride of the Rito, pillar in the sky. Its heart lights up when the sun is high. The heart shines upon a path not whole, but a warming flame can stir its soul. So, otherwise, there's a path not whole that we need to be paying attention to. But for the most part, I think that my first inkling is right. That was very delayed in how it fell. So we'll get some wood. Constantly checking the time. 11.25. Okay, this should be enough. Uh, did it just light up? No, it's not lit up yet. But it's about to. It's 11.40. So, we'll go to our inventory. Grab... Some wood. Place it down. Switch to our meteor rod, and... I think this will work. I'm hoping. It is now 11.50. Pillar Shadow is about to cross. 11.55. Oh, look, it's the heart. It's a heart. Wait, wait. Uh, let me look at this quest again. 
heart, the pride of the Rito, pillar in the sky, its heart lights up when the sun is high. The heart shines upon a path not whole, but a warming flame can stir its soul. We need to make a fire when this heart, this heart shadow, reaches the shrine pedestal. Oh, uh, please, wolves. Wolves, go. Leave me, wolves. Right? It's 12, 1220. Is this the warming flame? Or do we need to shoot? I think we might need to shoot a fire arrow through that. Uh, let's pull this out. We have plenty of fire arrows, but I also want to wait until this thing lights up as there's fire and carnage everywhere and wolves burning and fire. <laughs> Fiery wolves. <laughs> well, we did it. I think I would like to believe that it was not the campfire that did that, but in fact the wolves burning to death and the chaos <laughs> that ensued that actually unlocked that shrine. <laughs> we did it in the most non-romantic, clumsy way possible. We set wolves on fire and did this up. Okay, I'm sorry wolves, I should probably just like no, Wolf, you're still on fire. Okay, you're fine. Oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was an experience. Let's discover this shrine. It is the Barida Nog Shrine. Cannon. Barida Nog Shrine. Huh, I wonder what we're going to be using in this shrine. Maybe a cannon? Maybe, maybe not a cannon? You know what? I think it's a cannon, guys. I don't know what my first clue was. I think I might have the psychicness, but yeah, that's a that's a cannon. Okay, so we've knocked that clean. Now, are we supposed to load the cannon, or does it automatically? No, it automatically reloads. Okay. And now we have a bunch of obstacles. Place this in the cannon. When the time is right. Not yet. Now! Got it! We open up the next- wait, are we done? Wait, we're done? That- okay, they were just showing off a concept. Once again, so many of these shrines are like, Oh man, look at this really cool thing we can do. It's awesome, we can make a cannon. And that's it. You Move, move along, we don't need you anymore. Like... This cool concept, we're just going to throw it right in the trash. It wasn't cool enough, and we're going to move on. There are just so many awesome things that you could have done with this and made a whole shrine around the cannon, but instead we just fire it twice, and, and we're done. That's that's it. Or, or Wait, oh, unless. Unless. No, there's, there's more to this cookie parlor. I don't even know what that means. Challenge number two. They're not just throwing this in the trash, not yet. Throw the bomb in there. This one's gonna be a lot more difficult. Uh, I can't shoot it. Come back. Nope, that did not work. Okay. I won't fire till I see the whites of their eyes. Not yet. Oh, whoa! Way to thread the needle! I had every, every confidence that that was not going to work. But we did it! We threaded that needle, and our reward for that not only is the satisfaction of doing it, but also a diamond. And thus, we are the victors. I think that I can say with confidence that we have obtained all of the shrines in the Tabantha Frontier. As always, feel free to correct me on that. But I think we've gotten everything. I can't see there being more than one, two, three, four, five, six shrines in this relatively small area. There might be one more, but I, I kind of doubt it. Want, want me to tell you a story? I love stories. I found her last episode, just off screen when I was, I was running around talking to all of the children. And I saved it until this episode. I didn't even show it. I just saw that she was there and... Yeah, tell me a story. Awesome, me too. Ahem. Once upon a time, 
My grandpa stopped at a big tree while he was climbing a big mountain and looked below him to the northwest. When suddenly, he saw a huge snow white birdie with its wings spread wide. My grandpa took, took off flying after the snow white birdie and he got a little closer to the white birdie. Grandpa saw something super important inside its belly. The bird had swallowed. What did he swallow? I always get sleepy around that part of the story, so I don't remember. Oh, I know where the big tree is, though. Oh, it's over there. Do you see it? My grandpa said that he saw the Snow White birdie from that tree. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Now, what did that Snow White birdie swallow? I can't hear the story from grandpa anymore. Oh, that's so sad. A bird in the mountains. And that will be waiting for us when we go to that region. So, a number of episodes from now, because I, I believe there are a couple more quests floating around. If not, uh, I know what to fill the time with, and it's not going to the new region. I want that to be its own episode, and nothing but its own episode. So, if we don't find any more people right now who have quests for us, then I think we'll go fill the time with that. My goodness. Hmm? Oh, you must be the one Keel told me about. Thanks for helping her out. The girls were able to practice their singing thanks to you. Please, take this as a thank you. Purple Rupee. Well, I should get back to cooking. Keel is one of our five daughters, which means five mouths to feed. Dinner won't make itself. Find Keel? Completed? Yeah, completed. So, I, it would have been safe for me to have talked or spoken to her last episode when she was looking for Keel. I just didn't want to start another quest, but... It looks like that, that concern was uh, pretty negligible. Okay, so this guy can make us a new bow if we need need it. Which, of all the, the weapons, I'll probably need that the most. Because it's the Great Eagle Bow is one of the, actually probably the best bow in the game. Considering it has a quick draw and also a relatively high power. And three shots. Like, that's, that's a lot of damage. 28 times 3 is quite a lot. Okay, so is there anything else? I can talk to you. I don't think I've spoken to you. Champion Descendant. A thousand times, thank you. But never mind that now. I'm happy to answer anything I can. Sword? No, no, I was only joking. That sword you have there. That is indeed the sword that seals the darkness, is it not? Legend has it that the Hylian Champion fought against Ganon with that very sword. Champion Descendant. That sword is a precious gift from your ancestors. You must never let it go. Uh, Meadow. Divine Beast Va Meadow. An ancient Shiko weapon with the power to seal evil. It was once piloted by the Rito champion Rivali. If the, ch the legends are true, the light from the Divine Beast will ravage the Calamity. For now, Va Meadow will become the protector of this village and live on in legend. Alongside you. Hoo hoo hoo! Was there anything else? Uh, I'll talk- uh, I'll ask you about the Great Eagle Bow. The bow I gave you is the finest in the land, crafted by the Rito- uh, crafted in the Rito tradition. The champion Rivali once called it his own. I will not lie, that bow is difficult to handle. No Rito alive is capable of using it to its full t potential. Fortunately, our bowyer, Hearth, knows that bow well. You should talk to him for details. Was there anything else? No, that'll do it. Ho ho ho. So before we move on to the final thing this episode, I would like to go to the flight range, because we heard that Tabo was training his son there, and maybe we can help out with that process. So let's fly over here, it should be a short jog, and I will meet you at the flight range. It's you. Haven't seen you in a while. Now that Meadow's calmed down, I've started training Tulin again. If you have the time, would you mind showing Tulin how you ha can handle a bow? He gets his bluntness from me, but he doesn't mean anything by it. Don't let him- don't let anything he says get to you. Sure, I can show him how it's done. Tulin! What are you up? Little, what's up, little tyke? Hey, hey, Link! Hey, Tulin! You're Link, right? My dad told me about you. Also, he said you're real good with the bow. Is that true? Of course. Well, <clears throat> I'm alright. Nuh-uh. Dad said you were great, and Dad never lies, so it must be true. Come on, show me. I'll count down, and you'll, and you'll break all the targets before the time is up. When you break a bunch, I'll give you a prize. Are you ready yet? Sure. Ooh, on your mark. Get set. Go. Okay, we did get a falcon bow, thankfully. I'd rather not waste the great eagle bow. One, two, 
And, oh, we even get our stamina refreshed. Oh, that's nice. One. Two. Three. Four. Where's the last one? Five. Perfect shots. One. Two. Three. And are there any more? Yep, there are a couple. One. Two. That's probably not going to hit. Oh, it, it, it hit. Wow. I am a beast. One. Two. Perfect shots. Perfect shots on display. One. Two. Three. And a couple more. Oh, wait, wait. We have only a few seconds left. Shoot. Shoot. Did I do it? I don't see any more. I don't see any more. Are there any more? No, I think I did it. I did it. I think. Maybe. I don't think... Uh, did I do it? I, I figured I, he would have called out, called me out if I had, but I didn't see any more. <laughs> yeah, I knew you could do it, Link. I rem I'll remember the way you shoot when I practice. My dad told me to give you this as a thank you. Come back show to show me your neat tricks anytime. Silver Rupee. Now, did we shoot them all? Because there were 19. I figured they would round it off at 20. Here, I'm going to try it one more time and be a bit more thorough now that I know that I'm on the clock. Oh, there it is. There are 20. Whoa, awesome! You're amazing, Link. When you fired your bow, it was like time stopped. Oh, Dad told me to give you this as a thank you. Cold rupee. So that's an easy way to make money. Although it does cost us arrows, so it's not completely free. It is a great way to make money. All right. Uh, what I was going to fill the rest of the episode with was the weapon connoisseur. But I decided to pull out my map and make use of, a, of a, an ability, which I've never really touched in the Let's Play, no, at least not for the purposes which I'm using it for here. Hero's Path Mode. It shows us where we've gone before. So we can hit play, and from the very beginning of the game, you can see where we've gone, what we've done, and it's a fast forward of everything that's happened in the Let's Play. And as you can see, I haven't filled up the hours. I think it's 300 hours of this yet. So you can literally... Oh, it's paused right now. Uh, pause. There. You can see literally everything that we've done since the very beginning of the game. Now, the reason why this is important is because... Uh, Heroes Path Mode... How do I skip it? If I just scrub through this... Eventually, we'll get to the end, and you will see that in the Tavantha region, there's very clear areas that I've never touched before. Uh, this, this area of the ancient columns could be rife with Korok seeds, but specifically, this mountain here seems like it, ha it might have the most potential for a shrine. So, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to show all of this, but I'm going to go there and just see if there's anything interesting. It'll probably just be Korok seeds, but you never know. You never know. So, let's go, I guess. Now, as I head over there, there are a couple things which I haven't really gotten the chance to ruminate on um, that were revealed to me in the comments. For one, we actually missed some dialogue, it seems. When we went to uh, to Divine Beast Va Mado, if we had gone back to Taba in between uh, boarding Mado and then conquering it, we would have had some official dialogue. Now, I don't know what this entails, actually. And also, it looks like I'm just going to be tanking some cold some cold uh, damage here. But I don't know exactly what this entailed. I can't even find it on wikis. But I've been told by, I think, multiple viewers that it exists and that I missed out on it. Uh, pe people said also it was very interesting dialogue, too. It wasn't just like, go, Link, go conquer Korodai and get the crystals to see my house. It wasn't like that. It was actually something of substance. So, if you if any of you know in the comment section what that involved, uh please tell me because that was that was kind of intriguing. Okay, so we're heading this way, just kind of staying on the crest of this mountain, looking for Korok seeds, yes, but also looking for shrines or something of note. It'd be cool if there was one more shrine in the region. I kind of doubt it, but it'd be cool. Now, the reason why I'm showing this exploration, rather than just doing it off-screen, is because there's definitely more at stake here than just Korok seeds. I don't know what we would be getting, but for all I know, there is an actual shrine up here, so it, would, it wouldn't it would make sense for me to 
Uh, I need a better, a different weapon than, than this. Oh, that was close. Okay, I'm just gonna fill this full of lead. Die. Look, look at him in there. I can see a bunch of health bars just jumping around. Okay, okay, get up. Get up, Link. Oh, boy. Got a flurry rush in the middle of a bunch of them. Still getting hit. Spin attack. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot more at stake here. Oh, oh, hello. I actually need that. I need that for a uh, weapon connoisseur. Well, neat. Uh, let's drop this. Actually, I found an another frost blade. You can see there are a bunch of stars here, so I don't forget. Uh, this shrine, I was just clearing out tests of strength, and I found out that there is a there's a thing in there. There's a um, a frost spear. So I I can always get that, but it is nice that I just got one here. Of course, I can also get them to call CM. Die. There. Let's get all these rewards. Probably not something of something a substance, but it's it's worth it to explore. So yeah, with the shrine ex in sta at stake, it doesn't make much sense for me to cut out all this exploration. Plus, exploration is the name of the game, so it doesn't make sense for me to ice arrows. That's that's not bad. It doesn't make sense for me to relegate certain exploration as being not important. Like this, this is important. It just not as as emphasized as when we first head into the area. So. I, I think it I think it is definitely something I should be showing off. Uh, what is this? This is kind of whoa Whoa This is a creepy Korok seed if I've ever seen one uh, Spicy peppers. I believe I have about a hundred of those so 106 Let's get this Korok seed. That's that's a creepy one it's in the middle of nowhere uh, But also another thing I can talk about while I'm just doing this is Smash Brothers for the first time because Breath of the Wild has not seen a Smash Brothers release since it was released since it's still a relatively new game uh, the possibility of Breath of the Wild Link being converted into Smash Bros character is here and if there's ever been where did my shield go if there's ever been a, a Link that has kind of m merited um, Link in general to be changed it would be this one because if you look at the abilities of this link like he doesn't have the hook shot his bombs don't work the same um he has a spin texture he has all of the blessings which are unique there we get some amber there he has all of the blessings which are unique uh he has all these different new attacks and and new reworks that just normal link would not be possible unless they just made him look like look like link but with um where am I? Unless they just made him look like Breath of the Wild Link with all the other Link's kits, which I don't think would fit. So I've actually been doing a bit of brewing just to see, just to see what he, this Link would look like, and I, I've actually come up with a pretty good idea. And since you know, I have no one else to talk to, <laughs> I'm gonna give it here because I, I love, I love talking your ears off. So the idea I had for that was to have Link have a passive. With that passive being that as the game progresses as a, in a percentage, uh, Link would be able to... He would wear through his weapons, he would have weapon durability, and he would eventually break them. And as the game progressed, he would end... Eventually, when he finally got a new weapon... Okay, this is my chance. This is my... This is my chance. There's a moose here. I've never ridden a moose. We're riding a moose. And drop. Wait, what? I thought you could ride moose. What? I was pr I'm pretty sure I've seen a video where someone rode a moose. Well, this guy's going to be punished for his sin of not letting us ride him. Stupid moose and his stupid face. But yeah, uh, you'd go through weapon durability and eventually your weapons would break and you would get new weapons depending on how long the game had go gone in, in a percentage. Uh, but also, it'd be cool because then you could get spears, since we don't have a spear character in the game. You could get axes, which we don't have an axe character in the game. And you could get all these different cool things that you don't really have in Zelda. And I think it just it would just be a really cool idea. Uh, here, let's, let's top off our health here. Oh, oops, I... 
I just over uh, overloaded my buff here. Let's let's fix that. So yeah, um, it would also kind of make it so you couldn't just spam moves because eventually your, your weapons would break. Uh, and then also hit like his up B would be Revali's Gale, which would basically be Peach's up B, but you could do any action out of it. Side B would be Stasis, um, very similar to the his final smash in Brawl. Uh, you'd get Stasis and you would Stasis them. Uh, down B would be Remote Bomb. You could you could press A while standing to set it down, and then you could hit it with your attacks to kick it around. Be really cool. Neutral B would be the bow, but in midair you could aim it up and down, and Link would Link's movement would slow down. So there, there's so much cool potential for a a Smash Brothers Link. Uh, where are we? Oh, we've never been. Oh wait, wait. Oh, this is a new region, not the edge of the map. Okay. I was gonna say we've never been here before, but no, we're not actually skirting the edge of the map. We're skirting the edge of the area. Uh, so I think that's all that has yet to be, has been explored. Here, let me, let me check. No, not quite everything has been explored. I remember I found this mountain. <laughs> I found a mountain, it, as if it was hard to find. I stumbled across this... That's not even good either. I found... Okay, I went to this mountain. <laughs> I won't say I found it, because that sounds incredibly dumb. Look, I, I found Mount St. Helens. No one else has done that. Uh, and on it... Well, there's that dude, but... There was this rock fixture, which... I thought was interesting and could contain something good, and then I left. And what that is? Oh, it has a a giant thunder blade. Is it better than mine? It's on par. That was probably a bad idea. Uh, what is this one? It's just a base. Just a base thunder blade. Okay, well, I mean, I I have a great source of thunder blades already in the the Coliseum. That that just kind of has me set for everything involving um elemental weapons but it is good to know and if you're playing through the game and you're not you have not yet defeated all four divine beasts just know that there's a thunder blade that spawns there uh i believe also there's uh there's a thunder blade that spawns here on this tree stump it might be a flame blade come to think of it uh but there is a a blade that spawns there and i think that's it wait what is what is here no, we've been here. Yeah. So we've... We've explored this entire region now. So we're done. We're done with Tabantha Frontier. That's it. Right? Unless there's something on here. But I don't think there is. In which case, that means... There's nothing left to explore here. We, we're going to be heading into the final region of the game next episode. Just as a final thing, I think I'll go explore that island because it's big enough that it, it probably contains more than just a Korok seed. But otherwise, that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we're heading into the final region of the game. All the Divine Beasts are done. From there, we're going to be going on to... Well, we're going to be getting every shrine. But then we're going to be going on to the end. We're going to be heading to, to Hyrule Castle and beating Ganon. And then DLC Pack 2 will start. And then the Xenoblade Chronicles DLC and then finishing up the game therein. So, we're what, 111 episodes in? And that's, there aren't gonna be too many more. Okay, what is here? Whoa, a bunch of wind. What is, a chest? There's a chest here, oh, and a chest down there too. Silver rupee, and what's down, what's down here? Another silver rupee, I'm gonna guess? There's a little tent, a feathered spear, which we've gotten before. Don't need it. Oh, and the cave. Ooh. I mean, I don't think it's a shrine. But it's a, it's a Korok seed and a chest. Look at the chest first. And that's... Is that really it for this island? This would have been a great place for a shrine. Or a talus or something. Instead, it's just rife with loot. Loot and Korok seeds. Okay, is there anything else on this island? Or... Or can I proclaim this area beaten? I mean, presumably, there are more Korok seeds to get. If I zoom in here, the the density of them is not is not too uh, pronounced. So it's it's fairly sparse of Korok seeds. So I'll probably be finding more in the episodes, the off-screen stretches to come. But otherwise, the stuff that I should be showing, like exploration of that's actually new, I think there's none left. Yeah.
This island has been explored. Are there any more chests before we... Yep, there's one more chest. This area is just covered with chests. Bomb arrows. Those are, those are pretty valuable. Those are like 300 rupees. And that's... That's it. Wait. No, no chest there. That's all she wrote. All right. Next time, we're going to be heading into the next region. I believe it's called Hebra. I think it's called Hebra. And join me next time when we do that. And then after that, we're just going to be tying up some loose ends and heading to the end. All right. See you guys then. Flu, where did we start? We started from there. We started from there. Look at this. We flew that far. I think that's the farthest we've ever flown. Just period. Just ever. That's so cool. Okay, so we're on this tower now. We managed to shortcut it quite a bit. Let's... Let's lift the haze on the final area of the game.